Welcome to the Win Weekender, a comprehensive recap of the major story making the news this past week. I'm your presenter, Andre Huey. This week on the Win Weekender, we review the emergency meeting of Parliament held on Wednesday, which was called earlier in the week. We will hear from Prime Minister Dr. Denzel Douglas and Opposition Leader Mark Brantley this report from Win TV's Ken Richards. Opposition parliamentarians and the rest of the country appeared to have no clue why MPs were summoned to an emergency parliamentary session last Wednesday. Until that is, when Prime Minister Denzel Douglas gave this explanation to the House. If I may say without prejudice, the NIA had requested the National Bank of St. Kitts and Nevis to extend an existing overdraft facility, a facility which currently, and the public is aware of this, stands at some $64 million. The NIE have requested an additional $1 million. The bank, however, had required collateral to cover the additional debt. And we had put in place, therefore, an emergency meeting for the parliament today to seek the approval so that the federal government can provide the necessary guarantee for the borrowing of that extra million dollars by the NIA, as indicated in the resolution that was circulated, but which I now wish to withdraw. I wish to withdraw it because in the meeting that we've had um, this morning, we have made aware that the NIA no longer requires that particular activity. And so it is no longer necessary for the parliament to lend support in the way that was being intended. And as a result of that, the resolution which was intended to be before us is hereby withdrawn. Deputy Premier Mark Brantley on his radio program Wednesday commented on the so-called emergency session of Parliament. And so we go to Parliament. Along the way people are stopping us and asking us what is the emergency? What is there in Parliament today? And we as parliamentarians elected by the people to serve the people had to respond to those people questioning that we knew not why we were going to parliament and i want people i want that to sink in i want people to understand we knew not why we were being summoned to parliament it was as if we were children in kindergarten not knowing what lesson the teacher will bring today and so we went to parliament because we felt if there is an emergency we ought to go who knows what the emergency might be and so we show up in Parliament. Sometime close to the start of Parliament, the Prime Minister's Secretary came down and said the Prime Minister wanted to see the Premier of Nevis. And so the Premier departed to the inner reaches of the building to sit with the Prime Minister. We waited. The clock struck 10. The clock struck 10.30. The clock struck 11. The clock struck 11.30. At 11.45, quarter to 12, 15 minutes shy of the noon hour, bearing in mind that we were summoned to an emergency sitting of parliament which ought to commence at 10 a.m. At a quarter to 12, the parliament convened. And here we are, I and my colleagues, parliamentarians, representatives of people waiting to hear with bated breath along with the nation what is this emergency for which we have been summoned only to hear the prime minister get to his feet and to say that the nevis island administration wanted some loan and that he had come to parliament to pass a resolution and i have a copy of it in my hand guaranteeing the borrowing by the Nevis Island administration of one million. Hear me correctly, you know, I didn't say a hundred million, I didn't say ten million. One million EC dollars from the National Bank of St. Kitts. St. Kitts, Nevis, Anguilla National Bank. Let me call your name properly. And that is what he came for. That was the 
great and grave emergency affecting the country and the nation that we had to go to Parliament. But ladies and gentlemen, there was only one problem. Nobody asked the Prime Minister for any guarantee. The Davis Island administration had no discussions with the Prime Minister. There was no discussion between the federal government and the Nevis Island administration. WINN is 98.9. 98.9 is WIN FM. WIN FM's mission is to contribute meaningfully to the information, awareness, and the development of our nation and the region through the building of educated and informed communities. WIN FM faces the issues squarely without shying away from controversy while striving continuously to provide balanced, responsible reporting. Better music, better talk, better radio. 98.9 Win FM. Welcome back. We continue the report on the emergency meeting of Parliament held this past week. Deputy Premier Brantley has been explaining what he says actually happened. He thinks that the opposition Nevis Reformation Party had a hand in provoking the emergency session of Parliament that floundered. Colin Dore, our PS Finance, has a conversation with our banker, National Bank. And he says to National, bearing in mind that the summer months are normally difficult in terms of revenue, could we have $2 million made available to us so that in the event that we have any shortfall in revenue, we can do that? Colin Doe, being prudent, said to our banker, National Bank, we might need $2 million just in case we have shortfall. When we looked at our revenue, and the revenue was robust enough, we wrote further and we said, you know what, make it one million instead of two. Bring it down to one. Because we are, we are constrained, we understand the debt position, we are fighting with debt, debt to Delta, debt to different people. We are fighting to deal with that debt situation, created, as I said, not by us. Let me remind the public, not by us. We inherited it, but we are fighting to deal with it because as a government, that's what we have to do. And so Colin, being prudent, said, wanted two, but based on how things looking, let me reduce it to one. The bank responds and says the most extraordinary thing. The bank responds and says that they have to check with their major shareholder. Well, I want to ask the people of Nevis, if the government of St. Christopher and Nevis, better known as St. Kitts and Nevis, is the major shareholder in National Bank, well, does that not include the people of Nevis? So it's only Sinkitz people make up the major shareholder? The government of Sinkitz and Nevis is by definition a government for the people of Sinkitz and Nevis. And therefore, I found it quite amusing and bemusing that you will say to me, as a constituent element of that state, that you have to consult with the major shareholder. When the people of Nevis, through their government, is saying, we want a facility of $1 million. $1 million, you know. I will tell you all, a $1 million to your eyes is a lot of money. To a government, $1 million is not a lot of money. In the context of what government does and how government deals. $1 million. As I, one of my colleagues said today, one measly $1 million. Bearing in mind that the last time that the Prime Minister was in Parliament, he passed resolution for $525 million for the federal government. $1 million. So this was the response that came back, that they need to consult with the major shareholder. But we continue to do in Nevis what we can. And thankfully, our people have risen to the occasion, our people are paying their taxes, our people are doing what they need to do. And we were able to collect, thank God, far more in taxes than we actually needed for purposes of meeting our salary commitments. And so Mr. Do advised that he had done everything. And our civil servants, I am advised, and I can say, tonight, have been paid. And those who haven't yet cashed your check, whatever has been done is done. I think payday is tomorrow. Some have been paid already. Whatever it is, I am given the assurance by the people at finance that all is well. And that not only have we paid, but apparently we have a few shekels left over. Praise be to God. And so, in truth, even the million that we asked to be on standby just in case, we didn't need it. We didn't need it. Now mark you, this was a discussion, let me go back to the facts, between our permanent secretary finance and our banker, our permanent secretary finance and our banker. 
there was no discussion, I'm told, between the Nevis Island Administration and the federal government. There was no discussion between the Honorable Premier as Minister of Finance and the Prime Minister as Minister of Finance at the federal level. None whatsoever. But Joseph Parry and Henry Daniel go sink it's Monday. And all of a sudden we are told there is an emergency in the country and there will be an emergency sitting of Parliament. But only one problem. Van Samuel, who is Premier of Nevis, doesn't know what the emergency is. And today we are told emergencies in Nevis. Nevis has an emergency. Nevis needs money. An emergency exists in Nevis. But not a soul has bothered to tell the Nevis Island administration about this emergency. Had somebody picked up a telephone and said, Well, Mr. Premier, and accorded the man the respect that his office demands, as the man elected overwhelmingly with a mandate from the people, had somebody picked up a phone and said, Listen, I am hearing by these false prophets in NRP who journey over to bring tidings of war in Nevis and to determine how best they can put pressure on the people of Nevis that there is a crisis in Nevis. What is the position? No. The Prime Minister doesn't bother with that. Joseph Parry tell him there's a crisis, so he run to Parliament and say he have an emergency. And we don't know what the emergency is. The Premier of Nevis and the Deputy Premier of Nevis show up for Parliament in Sinkis today, not knowing that the emergency apparently is that there's a guarantee of $1 million that Nevis need. This has been The Win Weekend. On behalf of the Win TV news team, I'm Andre Huey. Thank you for watching.